let's say you're designing a chemical plant and you know what kind of reactor type you're going to be going with, you know what kind of chemical species are going to be present, and you know what kind of residence time you're going to need to achieve a desired conversion, and now your job is to actually go out and buy the reactor to start your operation. And so the question is, how big of a reactor are you going to need to tell a vendor to purchase um, for your process? And so what I'm going to do in this video is work through, using the Guthrie method, a process by which we're going to determine uh, a reactor volume that we will need given um, the information here. And to begin with, uh, with the known residence time that we've been given, I want to underline the fact that this comes from kinetics. And in other words, someone has already studied this reaction fundamentally and based on the uh, experimental data that they have, they have run GC to determine the species concentrations after certain amounts of time. And they will tell you that to achieve a certain product purity that you want in your effluent stream or desired conversion, you're going to need this amount of time uh, for a molecule inside of your reactor. So in this case, a molecule or your reactant molecules must spend um, 100, if we were to look at an atom, an atom has to spend 100 seconds inside of your reactor to achieve a conversion on average. Um, and then we also know that we're going to be working with a packed bed reactor that has a void fraction equivalent to 40%. Uh, this 40% refers to the fact that um, with catalysts, because catalysts have uh, empty spaces uh, adjacent to the actual active sites um, inside of the catalyst pellets, for instance, they have void fractions. And in our case, the void fraction is 40%. Um, and so um, this is this number will be important later on. We also know that we're going to want to make our effluent stream have a flow rate of 0 0.2 moles per second. Um, and this is the rate at which we're able to make our product. So that is valid inform or important information. Um, and then we also know, based on tabulated data, that our effluent molar density is equivalent to 0 0.13 moles per liter. And this is at standard temperature and pressure, 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere. And so the question to ask now is, how big of a reactor do we want to buy? And uh, if you are confident, you can pause the video now and see if you can do this. And if not, then we'll get started. So the first thing we're going to do is in the Guthrie method, there is an important equation that tells us a relationship between residence time and these other properties or parameters that we know. And it tells us that the residence time is equivalent to the effluent molar density times the volume of your catalyst quantity divided by your effluent molar flow rate. And so if you rearrange this to solve for volume of your catalyst, what you will find is that it is equivalent to tau times mu divided by rho bar. And for the sake of being a good chemical engineer, we will do a dimensional analysis on this uh, to check the units to make sure that they agree. We know volume has units of liters. For instance, we know that tau uh, should have units of seconds. Mu will have units of uh, moles per liter. And we know that uh, the density inverse of our effluent molar density uh, will be equivalent to liters per, I'm sorry, um, uh, this term here actually, sorry, uh, we know that our mu will have dimensions of moles per second because it's a molar flow rate, and then we know that our inverse uh, molar density will have units of um, liters per mole, and we'll see how these dimensions cancel out nicely, and we're left with liters, uh, so this checks out. And so this is a good method of verifying that we have written our equation correctly, and we will get dimensions that we expect. So it is a very important check to do, uh, especially if uh, you want to be certain in your data or your answer. 
And so the next step that we're going to make is simply plug and chug uh, based on the numbers that we have. And so we know that we've got a 100 second residence time. We know that our effluent molar flow rate has a value of 0 0.2 moles per second. And we know that our uh, effluent molar density had a value of 0 0.13 moles per liter. And this tells us that the volume of our catalyst will be equivalent to 154 liters. And we also know that we can determine the volume of our overall reactor by dividing the volume of our catalyst by one minus the void fraction epsilon. And with this information, uh, we determine that our reactor must have a value or a volume equivalent to 256 liters. And so we can see using the uh, Guthrie method, we were able to pretty quickly arrive at a ballpark figure for what kind of volume we're going to need. Um, it is a very important note though that we, this is all an approximation um, and this is getting into costing in reactor design and uh, chemical process design. So um, these are kind of back of the envelope preliminary calculations that you're going to be doing. In practice, it might end up that your kinetics are significantly slower than you expect, in which case we might see that our residence time would be, uh, we would need a longer residence time, in which case we would see this impact our uh, required volume of our reactor. Um, and we also know that a lot of our, perhaps our void fraction isn't correct, but for the sake of getting a ballpark figure um, with a certain degree of estimation, especially if we're gonna go out and ask for funding um, to begin uh, purchasing our equipment, this at least gets us an idea of where we're gonna be at. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.